weather and climate have been an integral part of our lives since time immemorial, affecting humans, nature, and animals both positively and negatively. The Kenya Meteorological Department has been observing, analyzing, and forecasting the weather conditions since the 1900s. As a national unit, we have responsibilities and indeed expectations to provide weather and climate services. We have observatories, which we also refer to as stations all over the country. We make observations of weather elements and we are trained to make use of those observations so as to make analysis on the most probable weather in the coming period of time. The National Meteorological Center is responsible for producing all the forecasts uh, in the department and uh, hosts numerous meteorologists who constantly analyze uh, meteorological data and produce forecasts at different time scales. Short time scales are daily forecasts. Then we have medium scales, which produces weekly and then the monthly and seasonal forecast. The forecasting involves three major processes, that is data collection, analysis and dissemination. This is the enclosure where we put our meteorological instruments that we use to measure the weather parameters, which is the data we use for the forecasting office. And in this enclosure, we have different measuring instruments. We have the evaporation pan, we have the wind anemometer, we have the soil temperatures, we have the Stevenson screen, which houses all the thermometers that we use here. And uh, we also have uh, the sunshine recorder, where we get the sunshine hours. This is where we get the raw data, which is used for forecasting. Because for us to do forecasting, we have to input the raw data. After observations from the KMD manned and automatic weather stations, the data that is observed there is sent through the global telecommunication system. Then from there, this are the products, the outcome of the observed data from the observatories and automatic weather stations. And from there, we do analysis and come up with the 24-hour forecast. We do 24-hour rainfall forecast, uh, marine forecast for fishermen at the Indian Ocean, uh, Lake Victoria forecast for fishing communities at the lake, aviation product that we give them the wind profile all the way from the surface up to the up atmosphere in which they use to develop their forecast. Kenya's meteorological department has deployed numerous weather stations nationwide, transmitting data regularly to the National Meteorological Center and globally through the National Telecommunications Center. We receive data from our outstations or rather our county stations that is weather meteorological data from count stations. Once we receive them, uh, we edit and then put it in the system for, for them to be transmitted to the end users. Issues of this forecast, it should be accurate and timely. An early warning forecast gives an informed decision making to the stakeholders. As a member of the World Meteorological Organization, Kenya shares and receives weather data globally, ensuring comprehensive forecasting. Forecasters amalgamate data from various sources to generate weather predictions, with shorter forecasts proving more accurate due to current data availability. We use historical data and observed data, not just from Kenya, but from other parts of the world, because weather does not know any territorial boundaries. What happens in other parts of the world also influence weather in our country. For example, the just concluded El Nino rains, that is the October to December 2023 season, was highly influenced by the El Nino phenomena that occurs over the Pacific Ocean. So basically, we have to include data, not just from KMD, but from other parts of the world. Once we receive this data, that is both the, observ the observational and historical data, we feed this data into computer models known as the global climate models. For us to be able to get the national forecast, we statistically downscale the output from these global climate models and we use three major techniques. The first technique takes care of the effects of 
the local factors that influence weather in our country. And by the local factors, here I am referring to the water bodies, especially the Lake Victoria and the Indian Ocean. And for topography, we are talking about the highlands and the lowlands of this country. The other techniques looks at the influence of the Pacific Ocean in the rainfall of our region. So the last technique looks at the effect of the global tropics on the seasonal rainfall of our country. So this statistical downscaling takes approximately one week. So then, after that, after analyzing and downscaling, we are able to come up with a national forecast. We do ozone and air pollution monitoring. So this is where we release our, our radio sons and the ozone sons. Today we are releasing a radio son, and this is a radio son. A radio son is used to measure the upper air levels, temperatures, pressures, the wind direction and speed, and the relative humidity. And the ozone sound is used to measure the upper level vertical profile of the ozone. It goes to about 35 kilometers high. And it, and it gives us the values of the ozone at the upper levels. We present this forecast to climate sensitive sectors through a forum that we call the National Climate Outlook Forum. This forum brings together producers and users of the climate information. So uh, during ENCO, Technical experts from these climate sensitive sectors develop impacts and advisories based on the forecast that we have produced. And then these, for, uh, these uh, advisories and impacts are incorporated into the forecast. At the National Climate Outlook Forum is also duplicated at the county level, where the same sectors are invited but now at the county level to ensure that the last mile user is involved in preparation of these uh, impacts and advisories. After we release both the national and the county forecast, it is disseminated to uh, ministry uh, departments uh, and agencies, non-governmental organizations. We disseminate this forecast basically through email. We also use the media, print media, the TV, the radio, and we also use social media to disseminate this forecast. Additionally, Kenya Meteorological Department hosts the Institute for Meteorological Training and Research, a WMO regional training center, which trains and builds capacity for individuals interested in studying the science of meteorology. The goal of the IMTR is to train technical officers on how to observe weather phenomenon to obtain accurate data, analyze it, and disseminate it to the National Meteorological Center. Uh, one main reason as to why we train is to ensure that the staff or the personnel in meteorology are giving quality data for quality analysis which leads to quality products. The World Meteorological Organization is very much concerned about standards and the quality of the products that, that, that we produce and therefore one thing that they usually ensure is that all the institutes that train meteorology are accredited by them. And therefore, this is one of the institutes that is accredited by World Meteorological Organization. Increasingly, volatile weather patterns and climate change have heightened the demand for weather forecasts, underscoring the importance of meteorological science in mitigating weather-related hazards. Weather and climate information is the most important tool in an early warning system because it provides timely information to prepare and mitigate the impacts that are associated with climate-related risks such as droughts and floods. Despite the challenges inherent in long-term forecasting, advancements in technology continue to refine accuracy, bolstering society's resilience against weather-related risks. We are all aware that we are working in a science that is changing and um, under us are researchers that also need to be guided. So we make provision for very many things, including the forecasting models that are in use the world over, so that the advisories that we issue are as sound as can be, even in terms of accuracy.